Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to teach you about buffering polygons. So to keep things simple, let's just do a definition and query, and this polygon will represent a lake. So if we go to Properties, Definition Query, Poly ID equals 101, and let's name this lake. And let's change our data frame properties from centimeters to meters to be more realistic. So our input will be our lake polygon. And let's buffer it by one meter and then OK. So our output polygon, if we change our drawing order, put our lake on top, basically represents a flooded area. So this is the flooded area. And if we zoom in, we could double check it using the measurement tool. So let's zoom into this corner and we'll use the measure tool, which is the ruler. So there's our ruler. And then we're going to measure in units in meters. So we snap to the lake edge and then snap, and it is one meter. Now let's assume that we want to represent the area from the shoreline of the lake out one meter, and we might call that the riparian shrub zone. So to do that, we can use the buffer tool. So I'll name my output buffer outside, and this time we'll tell it outside only. So outside only, and then OK. So here is the one meter riparian zone around our lake. So here's our lake, and let's assume we're in a drought period and the lake recedes by one meter. So we wanna create something like this. So this is the lake after the drought. So we can easily do that using the buffer tool and we specify a negative value. So in this case, a negative one and side type full. So then that creates our lake after the drought. So here's the original lake and here's the lake after the drought. So here's our lake and let's say we wanna represent this zone within one meter of the shoreline that's shallow water. So we can use the buffer tool to do that. If we go to results, we're gonna buffer it by negative one, but this time we're gonna choose outside only. So in this case, it will really mean inside only, and then okay. So here's our original polygon, and here is buffered negative one outside only. So it is basically that one meter from the shoreline into the lake. So let's let add back our original four polygons. And we'll buffer them based on whether it's loamy sand versus sand. So we'll have one buffer representing the area that's sandy loam and one buffer representing the area that's loamy sand. So we're gonna create a buffer dissolved by texture and our buffer will be one meter. So if we go down to dissolve, we're gonna dissolve based on a list of fields. So any polygon that has the same soil texture will be treated as a multi-part polygon that gets dissolved and then just okay. So here is the original two loamy sand polygons and then here's the buffer representing an area, here's a loamy sand. So this is in yellow, the loamy sand polygons. And then this area represents anywhere in that polygon, you're within one meter of a loamy sand polygon. And then sandy loam would be the brown polygons and inside this selected polygon, anywhere inside the selected polygon, you're within one meter of a sandy loam polygon. 
And then finally, we, we, we may want to represent the area within one meter of any texture polygon. So to do that, we could do buffer dissolve all. So if we go to results, instead of buffering by the items on the list, we're going to go buffer dissolve all and then OK. And then the result is this polygon representing anywhere in this polygon, you're within one meter of a square polygon.